Let's see. I think I got everything set there. I think. Let's see, I got the lamp just in the way so I can't see the screen. Awesome. Okay, I'm gonna turn my microphone up a whole bunch. That's that's really quiet. Okay. Hopefully everyone's not hearing my air conditioner. Let me know if you're hearing the air conditioner. I can probably filter that out. Let's see. Okay. Still getting set up. I just thought I'd do it live on stream. Because I don't know, that's fun for some reason. Okay. That. Okay, and I remembered to put the playlist and stuff on this time. Okay. Let's get a fresh paper towel that doesn't have a dead ant on it. Select a folder in my hand. So. Oh, GM Camulus is here already. I haven't even really started yet. Wow. Man, you're here. You're here super early. Yay for music time, but how dare you stream while I'm stuck at work. Ha <laughs> ha. Well. Ah. Ah. You know, it's the time I chose to do it. I was bored, and so I figured I'd start working on these mechs some more. You know, that's that's what it is. Let's see, can I orient the camera a little bit better here? Maybe, maybe a little bit like this. Oh, and Toker, wow, everybody's here, like right at the beginning. Wow, well, usually people don't show up this early. Ah, huh. awesome. What's up, guys? Okay, I think we're good. I think we're ready to start. Yeah, win some, you lose some, haha. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, cool. Wow, we actually have people already. Cool. All right. Well, what's up, everybody? Welcome to Painting on the Dark Side. We're going to be continuing working on the fifth Crucis Lancers for my friend Irish Rogue. And we're doing the, uh, we're doing the green and white thing. Uh, so really, we've only, we've only finished the white on this Warhammer. Well, I say finished. I don't know. There's probably going to be, you know, touch-ups here and there. It kind of looks a little shitty, but, you know. All through and gray. That's the thing. Okay, one more job and then it's my lunch break. We'll be back soon. All right, man. Cool. All right, do a good job. Oh, and uh, if Irish Rogue is watching, I I totally printed this thing for for him. He he wanted one of these little fidget things, and so uh, I 3D printed one for him. This is just like a thing off of Thingiverse. It's pretty stiff right now. Um, but you know, as you, as you like fidget with it and stuff, it'll, it'll loosen up over time. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. He had a thing like this and it, it wasn't super great, but then we found this on Thingiverse and so I just printed it out and, uh, yeah, there it is. Uh, you know, it's a little, it's a little rough, you know, there's a little spot, there's a couple little spots where we could do some, you know, some cleanup and stuff. But basically, this is the thing. I can't get this the center part to rotate. Here, it's supposed the center part is supposed to spin around like the rest of this stuff. I think. Uh, so that's pretty that's pretty stiff. There's like a little thing in here, and it it's loose, but I can't get it to spin. So I don't know. Uh, yeah, no, it's that's pretty stuck. But the rest of it works. It's just it's just pretty tight. So over time, it'll. It'll loosen up, and it has like a little thing where it can go in your keychain and stuff. So, anyway, yeah, I just I had a big spool of gray filament in my in my resin or my resin print in my uh, in my filament printer, and uh, so it's gray. But you know, the next spool I'm putting in is gonna be black. So, yeah, um, that's pretty cool. It'll break in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It will. It'll break in over time. Um, so when I, when I print stuff, it prints out with the, with these little, like, skirt things that you, ju you just kind of tear them off and stuff. And so you can see, 
kind of right here, it's it's got that little lip on it from where there was a little skirt around this. And, uh, you know, just, just taking an X-Acto knife to it, just kind of carefully slicing that off, that will fix 90% of the problem with it. You know, because it can kind of, I, I bet you can hear that on in the microphone right now. It sounds kind of grindy when, when we're doing this, but, you know, just little little stuff like that that'll that'll fix it up in no time. Um, anyway, so that's for Irish Rogue. He wanted one of these, and I made that for him, or, or printed it, you know. But it's just a thing off a thing of verse. Uh, let's see. Just gonna take a bunch of fidgeting. Yeah, yeah. You know, I've I've loosened it up quite a lot already. Like when I when I first printed it out, like this this first ring right here, that would not spin at all. And now it does, it's just real hard. Like it'll see it'll move now, but it's it's just it's just like insanely difficult to get it to move uh clockwise, I guess, or depending on which way you're holding it. Like I can't get it to go that way at all right now. Yeah, it's it's very tight. It's very tight. But it'll yeah. Yep, it will loosen up over time. Yeah. It took a lot of it took a lot of just messing with it to even get it this far. So yeah, but it's it's kind of cool. I don't know, just a little, a little weird thing you can just do stuff with. Gonna be lurking a bit. Okay, that's cool, man. I'm gonna be painting a bit. Yeah. Huh. Oh man, I have I have also been uh, resin printing a whole bunch of stuff. I I printed out like an entire new warband for Frostgrave and stuff. Like uh, my my. Current Frostgrave warband is is a bunch of guys that that look something like this. I mean, they're not all this guy, but this color scheme and stuff. And I uh, printed out a whole new warband. And man, uh, I'm probably gonna paint those on the stream at some point, along with along with the terrain that I showed uh, that I showed you guys yesterday and stuff. Um, but I, also, I have more BattleTech stuff to paint too. Like there's there are. These fifth Crucis Lancers, and then uh, I've got more mechs to add to my house Davian troops, and uh, I've got an aircraft that I, that I'm going to be adding, and everything. And uh, yeah, games. Ooh, man, I love painting stuff for games. Ooh, I like I like playing the games, and I don't like playing with gray plastic or resin or metal or whatever. So anyway, okay, let's actually start painting. So we're still working on the white bits. Ooh, now just whack the camera real hard. Well, the stand for it anyway. Okay, so we're still working on the white. Uh, I'm still going to be using my uh, my zero three cheap Amazon brush. Um, and it's it's not synthetic. It's a uh, it's an actual sable hair brush, but it's just a cheap one, you know. But I am that type of person where I don't like to buy, you know, expensive brushes. Like, you know, like, I don't like to buy, like, Windsor and Newton brushes that cost, like, $25, $30 a brush. Because I feel like I'm going to ruin them. And then I feel bad about that. Uh, however, when I ruin these brushes, who cares? It was, it was five bucks or whatever, you know. I'll just buy a new one, you know. Or it was, it was like, five, five or ten bucks for, like, a pack of these brushes. So, I don't feel that bad about it when I... When, when these brushes inevitably die. Not that I set out to ruin them on purpose or anything, but brushes will inevitably die. Even really nice ones. And I'm sure like really nice Windsor and Newton brushes will last like exponentially longer than these cheap ones, but still they're gonna die at some point. And you know, I don't, I don't wanna have to, I don't wanna have to buy new ones because yeah. It's like buying replacement uh, replacement heads for electric toothbrushes. Man, I did not realize how much those were gonna cost when I bought a Philips Sonicare toothbrush. Jesus Christ. Like, I would I would have been fine just using a regular toothbrush had I realized how much the replacement heads for those things cost. They're insanely expensive. So I just try to make them last as long as possible now. Um, anyway, okay. So we're gonna go on and we're gonna paint, you know, all this this dirtiness on the on the white panels here. And we're just gonna make them pretty much nice and white again. And then it will look nice. Yes. 
It will look all nice and clean. Well, it won't look clean, but... I probably should have gone for, like, Nuln Oil or something, or maybe a, maybe a gray wash. I actually do have, like, a light gray wash that I could have used on this. Because uh, Dark Tone is pretty black, and that seems like it was a little too heavy of, of a thing to put right over white like this, which is why it looks, you know, super, like, muddy and dirty and stuff now. So probably in the future, when I do, you know, washes over white like this, what I'll do is I'll use something like, mm, like this. I'll use something, let me shake this up a little bit here. I'll use something like this Vallejo light gray wash which i had sitting right here the whole time i could have just used this but i don't know i just uh i went for i went for the army painter dark tone i thought that would be the better choice and you know it works i'm not i'm not unhappy with the results but i think they would have been better if we had used something like this light gray wash you know like when i'm when I'm panel lining a Gundam or something that has, you know, mostly white armor, I like very I like a very sharp contrast, and so I use the black panel liner and stuff. I like I like black panel lines on uh, on white armor. You know, that I think that looks pretty nice. However, this is a little different. This is a little bit different of a situation. You know, we don't necessarily want like super sharp panel well we do want sharp panel lines that's that's not what i'm trying to say we do want sharp panel lines on this but oh spotify ads yay uh yeah we do want sharp panel lines but we don't want it to look dirty and see it looks it looks dirty right now i didn't i didn't really want that that's kind of an unintended uh consequence of doing the 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 really dark black wash Whereas if I just used the gray wash, you know, I'd, I'd still be doing this step, but the parts that I'm that I'm not going back over would not look, you know, dirty. It would it would just look a little darker. It would just look tinted, basically. So next time, next time I do this, we'll probably do it that way. But it's fine, you know. Irish Rogue seemed okay with the way this came out, and uh, you know I don't, I don't hate it. It's, it's acceptable. But you know, I think I could have probably done a better job. I was just kind of rushing through it. I don't know, cause I'm I'm very excited to play Battle. I'm very excited to actually play a game of BattleTech. I haven't played this game since high school, and I really want to play it. I'm so excited. And uh, it seems like Irish Rogue is, is pretty excited to play this, too. So, yeah. Uh, I bought a pack of maps. I uh, bought the Battle of Tukaid map pack for, for the Battletech tabletop game. So when we play, we can actually play on hex maps. And that'll be awesome. Because, uh, like, Battletech, as I recall, has... You know, it has it gives you the option of of whether to use a hex map, which is why they have hex bases. It gives you the option to use a hex map, or you can play on a uh, on a regular, you know, just tabletop basically, and use use a ruler or use a use a tape measure or a ruler or something like that. But I would prefer to play on the hex map. Because then that eliminates the need to to get out a ruler and measure, you know, that it's it's one less piece of equipment I need to play the game. And it kinda it doesn't exactly skip a step, I mean, because you're still gonna have to like count how many hexes you are away from 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 whoever you're trying to fire at or avoid being fired at by or stuff like that. So you're still gonna have to do that. But uh I find for me, at least, uh, this is not universally true for everyone, but for me, it's easier for me, or it's not easier, but it's more, it's quicker for me to count hexes 
than it is to like measure distances, right? And then also, if you just count like, if you just go, okay, well this is six hexes or whatever, or however many hexes it is, you know, then there's, then your opponent cannot jump in there and say, oh, well you didn't measure that correctly, you should have measured from this part of the base. I mean, Irish Rogue and I don't really do that, but I'm, I'm just saying like, in general, you know, your, your opponent can't jump in there and, and go, well, you know, it should have been, uh, you know, from this part of the, of the tape measure or this part of the base or this part of the model and you didn't measure that correctly, you know. So there, there's none of that if we're just using hexes, you know. It's, it's clearly, you know, four hexes away. It's clearly ten hexes away. However far it is, you know, it's, there's no, it's not really disputable. You know, we can both count it and come up with the same number. Whereas if, well, if I just measure it with a tape measure, well, maybe you're measuring from here and maybe I'm measuring from over here and we come up with different numbers. So, hexes. So yeah, I got hex maps to play Battletech on and it's gonna be amazing. And at some point, we're also probably gonna play some Frostgrave. I mean, we've played Frostgrave before and it's fantastic. But now I have the ability to uh, to 3D print new terrain for it. Ooh, it's gonna be great. I mean, I showed you guys some of the terrain I printed already, and uh, man, I can't wait. I can't wait to paint this terrain. Oh, it's gonna be great. And a new warband, new terrain, new warband, new new battle tech stuff. Just oh man, I can't wait. This ah, this 3D printer is fantastic. 3D printing is so much fun. 3D printing is kind of its own hobby, right? Like, I heard that, I'd, I'd heard that before I got, before I ever got a 3D printer, you know, that it's, it, it kind of becomes its own hobby. And, I, you know, I wasn't really looking for that. I was just looking to kind of augment the hobbies that I already do. And it does do that. But, man, you get, you kind of get this 3D printing bug, you know? Like you, you start doing it, and then you're like, and then you print a thing, and you're like, oh, I wanna, I wanna print another thing, just whatever, print something, you know? It's, it's like getting a tattoo. You get a tattoo, and then immediately you're, you're like, I want more tattoos, you know? Um, yeah. So 3D printing is super fun. See, yeah, I got, I got the resin printer, and I uh, started printing, and that was very, that was very easy to get into the the resin printer it didn't have a lot of you know like calibration steps or anything it was basically just you know put it together and it was like it was like two pieces so i mean you know it's basically put it together slice a file start printing you know it's pretty easy but the fdm printer it's it was a bit more involved so you know that's that's you get it and you and you put it together and then you do the test print and you see that the printer works, okay. But you can't just immediately start printing a thing. It's not it's not like an out of the box experience like that. There's a there's a lot of calibration involved with uh, with FDM printing and stuff. And basically I've got I've got my FDM printer pretty much calibrated now. I'm not having any, you know, printing failures or anything with it. Uh, I've printed a whole bunch of stuff. I just I just printed some some bases earlier. I printed some bases for for the new Frostgrave guys that I printed out. And uh, yeah, it's working great. It's working great. So I wanna I wanna start printing more. I wanna print more like practical stuff too. Like uh, I think I'm gonna print like a paper towel holder for uh, for my 3D printing desk or table or workbench or whatever it is, you know? Because uh, when you're resin printing, you need a lot of paper towels. And so I, I have a roll of paper towels that I keep under the, under, the, under the desk there, but just kind of on the floor, and then I have to just grab them whenever I need them and stuff. But, you know, it, it occurs to me that, hey, I have this 3D printer, you know, why don't I just print myself a paper towel holder and screw it onto the table. So I think I'm gonna do that. Like I found a nice one on Thingiverse. 
So I'm probably just gonna print that when I'm when I'm done here. Like after the stream or something. I think that'll be pretty cool. Yeah, I think that will be pretty cool. Anyway. Word. Okay. Painting white. Painting white is definitely not my favorite thing to do. And I'm back. Damn this curse of raking pride in my... Uh, raking? Of taking pride in my work. Could have been back faster, but have to make sure job's done right and people are happy. Well, yeah, that's important, really, in any line of work. You know, doing a, doing a good job. You didn't really miss that much. I mean, it's just kind of me talking to myself into a microphone. <laughs> yeah. Although, I guess if that's what you're into, then you missed my whole monologue about 3D printing. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I was just, I was just talking about 3D printing and stuff. That's that's kind of the thing I'm doing lately. Just 3D printing stuff. I 3D printed all this BattleTech stuff. And I, w I was just saying that uh, I was I'm 3D printing some new uh, some new Frostgrave stuff, stuff like that. So. Uh, we agreed that you can't make Irish mechs better than yours, and you need to make them rubbish, right? Uh, typing on my phone is never accurate. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, can't you see how much crap they look like? Yeah. It's, it's, hang on, hang on. <laughs> no, I'm not, I'm not really doing that, but... Uh, here, hold on. Let's see. Okay. Not that this is finished, but, you know, his mechs versus my mechs. Neither one of them have a lot of... I, I didn't do a lot of detail work on either one of them, you know, but I, I think they're going to come out to be about the same level of detail, I think. Something like that. Meh. You know. Yeah, I didn't... I'm not... I'm not going, like, super crazy with it or anything, you know. Just... I'm just basically getting colors on them so they're not... So they're not, you know, lumps of gray resin. When we're, when we're playing with them, because I hate that. I hate playing against Grey Resin. Like, my Frostgrave guys, I did a little bit more more detail on. Not not a whole big, huge amount, but, you know, you can, you can see there's there's more than zero detail on these guys, and, like, all of my Frostgrave guys basically have some amount of detail. Like, I took my time. Well, I didn't, I didn't take my time. I kind of rushed through them, but, you know. I didn't rush through them as much as I'm rushing through the Battletech stuff. Uh, cause I'm trying to paint two- I'm trying to paint stuff for two people, basically, so I'm- I'm taking a lot of shortcuts with these, basically. So I'm not doing- I'm not doing an incredible amount of detail on the Battletech stuff, so they're probably both gonna come out looking like crap, honestly. Again, I'm on a phone, smaller screen window now, haha. <laughs> Does Irish paint? I kept meaning to ask yesterday and kept forgetting. No, no he doesn't. No. Um, I mean, I think he wants to, but he doesn't really have a place to do it, you know? It's... It's that, it's kind of that thing where, you know, if, you, if you're not, if you're not in a particular hobby, then you're looking at it from outside, and every time you see a thing that you can buy for that particular hobby, you go, you go, ooh, that's really expensive, ooh, yeah, you know. But when you're in the hobby, you're like, well, that's how much that thing costs, and you're and you're more prepared to spend money on it and stuff. So, I think once he actually like takes that plunge, you know, he'll he'll end up liking it. But until then, you know, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna paint the stuff, I guess. And I don't always paint the guys that he plays with, you know. Like sometimes I, I'm, sometimes he just plays with gray plastic, and okay, that's fine. You know, like basically, if I don't paint the stuff, it doesn't get painted. You know, I don't like to play with gray plastic, especially when I'm playing like 
actual Warhammer or something. Oh man, I hate playing with gray, pl gray plastic. I have about four different Warhammer armies, like 40k, and uh, my, all of my stuff is painted. All the stuff that I play with in Warhammer 40k and, uh, you know, subsequent Warhammer games like uh, Underworlds and stuff like that, all my stuff is painted. I don't like to play with unpainted stuff, but other people clearly do not feel the same way about their stuff. Like, um, the only painted stuff that... that any of the like Irish Rogue or or my other friend who plays that stuff, the only painted stuff they have, I've painted for them. <laughs> so basically if I don't paint it, it doesn't get painted. And since I'm very excited to play Battletech, uh, I'm I just decided, hey, you know, pick some stuff and I'll paint it for you. Because I don't I don't want to play against just a bunch of grey resin on the table, which you know, it ends up happening, like, when, when we play Frostgrave and stuff, I end up playing against, you know, gray plastic or, or just gray resin or whatever, and uh, it's... Uh, I, I gotta say, it's not real immersive, you know? That's... That's my biggest hang-up about it, is that it's, it's not immersive when I just see... Like, if I'm playing 40k, for example... All my all my dark angels or imperial knights or whatever whatever I'm using, you know, all my guys are the colors they're supposed to be, and they look okay, you know. Not that I'm the best painter in the world or anything, but uh, they look okay. Um, where and then oh uh, here comes the uh, the army of gray people. Oh wow, fear the army of gray people! Yay. You know, that's that's super unimmersive. And I don't I don't I don't really like that. <laughs> and uh but, but at the same time I don't know. I mean sometimes I have to some you know, sometimes my friends did not necessarily want to play those games and so it's it's not really fair of me to just be like, hey, Go go buy uh, go buy so many hundreds of dollars worth of stuff and then spend hours and hours painting all of it, and you didn't really want to do this anyways, right? So unless I unless I paint it, it doesn't get painted basically. Yeah. Um. Anyway, let's see. Gray knights are strong though too. Um. Are they? I mean, okay. I've never, I've never played Gray Knights or even played against Gray Knights, but I've seen a lot of games. I've seen a lot of like battle reports on on YouTube with Gray Knights, and uh, oh, actually, you know what? Actually, I don't think I've watched a ninth edition battle report. I think all the, so all the games of 40k I've played have been eighth edition. And all the battle reports of 40k I've watched have been 8th edition. And I have the 9th edition uh, rule book, but uh, I have not played a game of 9th edition. I don't have any of the 9th edition codexes. And yeah, I don't know. Just uh, I haven't been super interested in actual 40k lately. I've been I've been more interested in stuff like you know, Battletech, Frostgrave, Stargrave. Uh, I also got the rule book for this game called Gamma Wolves, uh, which if if you watch a channel called Gorilla Gorilla Miniature Games, the guy that runs that channel, uh, his name is Ash. He created this game called Gamma Wolves. He's also created a couple of other games, but uh, I also haven't gotten to play a game of Gamma Wolves. But it's it's really cool. Gamma Wolves is like a, a miniature agnostic like mecha combat type game. Let's see, was a play on gray resin. Laugh out loud, but sure ruined my joke. Oh, haha. Ha. Oh, gray knights. Oh, cause they're, cause they're they would be unpainted cause they're gray. Oh, I get it. Ha <laughs> ha. Hilarious. Oof. <laughs> Man. But, um, yeah, Gamma Wolves, though. 
Like, I, I printed out some, some mechs for Gamma Wolves, but then my friend that I was going to play with got sick, and uh, we didn't end up playing it. I mean, we, we're probably still going to. We're probably still going to play it. Uh, and I still have the stuff I printed out. But, you know, just at the moment, it's not, it's not really possible to play it. So. But it looks cool nonetheless. I've read the rule book and everything a couple of times. And I'm I'm excited to play it whenever whenever that you know becomes a possibility and stuff. So yeah. If you if you've never heard of Gamma Wolves, go check that out. It's pretty cool. Uh, let's see. But BattleTech, man, I'm I'm very much just in like a BattleTech like frame of mind lately. That's uh, it's real. Ooh, ooh, Spotify ads. Oh my god, as a fitness instructor. Wow. Oh wait, what is this ad for? Just pick up the bottle, unscrew the cap, tilt it towards your face, and drink. Tilt it towards your face and drink. Okay. Perfect technique. Apply directly to the forehead. Oh, anyway. Yeah, because uh, because Gamma Wolves is a miniature agnostic game, uh, what I did was I got a I got some like larger uh, battle tech models than this. Like you can you can just take these you can just take the 3D models of of these battle tech miniatures and scale them up as large as you want. But that doesn't necessarily look good. You know they lose a lot of detail when you blow them up like that. You can blow them up a little bit like like 10 or 20 percent and they still look fine but if you make them very much larger than that they look like crap so what i did was i went to this site called gambody.com where they where they sell like larger uh like model type miniature when i say model in that context i mean like a, a thing that you're gonna like display on a shelf or something so they sell like you know, 3D printable, you know, models uh, that are meant for that kind of stuff. And they sell uh, models from like MechWarrior Online and stuff. So, but, the, but they're very big. <laughs> Spotify coming on strong. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but they're very big. So I got like the Timberwolf and I got the Mad Cat Mark II and stuff. And, um, when you buy a model for when you buy those models off of that site, man, they're like a foot tall. Like these models are like a couple inches tall, but wow, those things are are gigantic. So I bought those big models and I scaled them down a bit. And so I I have uh, I have a Timberwolf and a Mad Cat Mark II. And then I also I went on another site and I got some heavy gear models. I got the I got the hunter from heavy gear, and so I printed out a couple of those. And basically, you want like you want about three to six mechs for your for your crew, and, and gamma wolves. So I got uh, I got the timber wolf and the mad cat mark two, and I made them. I made them smaller than than you know the default size that they come, but they're still pretty big. They're still way bigger than actual BattleTech models. And uh, I got some some heavy gear uh, gears, and then I printed a, I printed out two of those. So I basically have you know four different mechs for my my Gamma Wolves crew. Whenever I get to actually play Gamma Wolves, I still have to finish painting them at some point, but uh, you know, I have them anyway. Let's see. I love some of the Titanfall mechs, I love those ones. Uh, and now I'm waiting outside of my next job. Uh, it's in an hour, I can relax. Oh, that's good. Um, actually, uh, on that site I just mentioned, Gambody, I think they do have uh, some Titanfall mechs. Robot mech. What do they call them? Titans. Ah, uh, whatever. Yeah. Um, they, I think they have Titanfall stuff there. Yeah. 
The, it's kind of expensive though. It's like twenty, thirty dollars for a, for a, just for the STLs and stuff. You know? So you gotta you gotta really want it. But uh, yeah, it's like well, if I'm gonna play a miniature agnostic thing, I'm I'm definitely gonna play it with my favorite robots. And since uh, the Timberwolf is my favorite mech, you know, I, I had to have that. So. So I got it. I, th I think it was about $25 or so just for the STL. But I bought it, you know, because I'm a sucker like that. So I got it. And now I have it. And also, when you buy stuff off of that site, they give you a limit on, on like, how much stuff you can print. Like, they're, they're like, well, you can print three of these models or whatever. But here's my question. How are they going to know how many I printed out? It's not like they're tracking that, right? You know, it's like, I could print out a hundred, and ha how are they going to stop me from doing that? You know? Like, I don't... I don't think... I don't think... Uh, I mean, I think that you have the right to be like, hey, you know, don't print this out and then sell it. You know? That's not cool. It's not your intellectual property. And okay, I'm I'm down with that. You're right. That's not that's not my IP. I don't I don't own the the license to that. That's cool. However, if I have purchased that file, I will print it out as many times for my own personal use as I damn well please, and you have no business telling me that I can only print out like 3 of these for my own personal use. No, you can go right to hell, and I'm going to print out as many as I want. But anyway, uh rant over. Let's see. Uh, and now I need to check that out and get my mate to print them. Uh, hey, if they're quality, it's better than buying it at a store for two hundred dollars. Well, this is true. Yeah. Plus, I don't think there was. I don't think there's a store that sells like Big Macs like that and stuff. Um, also, uh, one second. Also, I mean, there there are other benefits to uh, to buying stuff on that site. Like, uh, I'm, I sound like I'm advertising for them or something. I, gu I guess I technically am. Um, so they'll when you when you buy a model on that site, you, most of the time they have they you you get all of the files that, that they have for that model, and so they often have a version that's specifically for FDM printers, and then another version that's specifically for resin printers. So now that I have an FDM printer, because I didn't, I only had the resin printer at the time, but now that I also have an FDM printer, I could totally go back and print out uh, the FDM version of the Timberwolf and make it, you know, its actual size and stuff. And uh, that would be, that would be really cool. I would love to have like a foot tall Timberwolf over here. I don't know what I would do with it other than just paint it and have it look cool on my desk or something, but... You know, just just to have that? Wow, that would be that would be amazing. Just a just a big timber wolf, man. That would, that would be and you know, like I already bought the model, so you know, all I really have to do is just print it out and stuff. But the downside is it's a lot of parts and stuff, and some of them, you know, some of them are gonna need supports, so you gotta spend time, you know, supporting them. Cause like the files that you're buying are not supported in any way and uh you know if yeah it, it takes time to, to figure out the best orientation to print in and just all that kind of stuff so you got to really have a moment to do it and all that kind of thing do it add lighting and make it pimp uh, give into the sp give into the display demons. Go big. <laughs> I mean, maybe I don't know when I'm when I'm done painting the actual battle deck stuff. Maybe that's that's possible. I might do that. I don't know. But definitely, I want to paint the battle tech stuff and that. Oh, you know what? I need some flow improver in this. This is drying way too fast. It's kind of drying in my bristles there a little bit. I don't, I don't necessarily like that. 
let's add a small amount of flow improver that I put in this little squeezy bottle. Or a uh, dropper bottle, not squeezy bottle. I mean, it's a squeezy dropper bottle. We'll just, we'll just do this. Like, drop. There we go. Okay. Flow improver. Okay, we'll just mix that on in there. That's way too much. Holy crap. That's so much. I might need to put a little bit more paint in there. Oof. Oh, I got that all up in the ferrule. Jeez. That's not great. Okay, let's get that out of the brush. That might be okay. Let's see. Oh, that, well, let's, okay. Let's try painting with that. It might be fine. To do, here we go. Ooh, okay, yeah, actually, that's, that's not bad. That's pretty good consistency there. Okay, it's a little, it's a little more runny, but I think it's okay. Yeah, it's not, it's not drying so fast now. Wow, yeah, that was really annoying. Okay. Super weak drying time there. Okay, maybe, yeah, maybe I need to mix a little bit more paint into this now. Get that ratio a little, a little nicer, a little bit more optimal. Something like that. Uh, print one. Fill it with Pepperidge Farm and smuggle me the goods. <laughs> oh man, just angling for those cookies, huh? Uh, I wish it were not so expensive to ship things internationally. It really sucks. Anyways, let's see. What was I actually talking about? I forgot. Hmm. Ooh, speaking of cookies, uh, I totally just got some new Oreo cookies. Uh, what are they called? They're, uh, I got some... Uh, what are they What are they really called? Toffee... Toffee something? Shit. Uh, I can't remember now. Anyway, something something with toffee in the name. Oreo cookies. Wow, super good. They have like all these different kinds of Oreo cookies now. Uh, the last kind of Oreo cookies I, I tried were called Java Chip, and they were very good. They, they're basically like a, a coffee-flavored thing. And, uh, you know, I'm not a coffee drinker, really. I, like, I like the taste of coffee. I like the smell and the flavor and stuff, but I, I just don't really drink coffee. But uh, man, the the fla the the flavor of the cookies, fantastic. So if, you, if you're an Oreo person, you're definitely gonna want to try the these toffee flavored Oreos. Man, fantastic. Oof, I I think I sat down and ate a whole row of them earlier. <laughs> great, they're great. Let's see, Just do like a little second coat over this that came out a little a little splotchy. I mean, a lot of this is coming out a little splotchy, but. Eh, I don't know. I'm not super concerned about it. Let's see. Ooh, this song is cool. Wow. I'm very much into this synthwave thing lately. Let's see. Always, the cookies must flow. He who controls the cookies controls the hemisphere. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. Cookies. Mm. That's like the top of the food group, right? The like the food pyramid thing. Cookies. Yeah. I love cookies. Like sometimes you go to like a sub place and then they're like, "Do you want cookies or chips with that?" And I'm like, "How is that a question? Just give me the cookies." Like that's Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> cookies. I love cookies. I can't get enough cookies. Cookies are so good. Like, chips. Chips are fine. I like chips. But cookies. Cookies are where it's at. Especially Oreo cookies. Mmm. Man. Oreos are like the best thing ever created. I'm probably going to eat some more Oreos after this stream, actually. I think... After this stream, I think what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna get that box of toffee-flavored Oreo cookies, 
And then I got a couple new A24 movies, like movies from the from the studio A24. And uh, I'm gonna go watch one of those while eating some toffee Oreo cookies. Hmm, that's gonna be amazing. Oh, I got a shoulder done, look at that. Okay, that doesn't look too bad. That doesn't look too bad, I think, yeah. It's looking fine-ish, somewhat. Looks somewhat okay, decent. Let's see. I do love Stoney's Food Pyramid at the convenience store in Encino, man. Anytime anyone talks to the pyramid, it's the first thing that jumps into my mind. Man, I don't, I think I haven't seen Encino Man since I was like a, like a little kid. Like, I don't, I kind of don't remember what it was about. That's not, that's not the one where they find a, where like, it's, it's not the one with Polly Shore where they find like a caveman or something, is it? What? No, I'm definitely, I'm thinking of something else. What, what was Encino Man about? Damn, I, I haven't seen that in a, I know I've seen it. I've definitely seen it, but I'm not, it's not, it's not coming to mind right now. I'm gonna have to Google it or something. Hmm. That's a, that's a Pauly Shore movie, right? When you're done, take a photo of yours and Irish's and send it to me on Steam so I can see them without blur. Oh, yeah, totally. Yeah, because it, it is fairly blurry, isn't it? Yeah. Um, it's, it's the camera. There's nothing I can do about it. Uh, yeah, I'll totally do that. Oh, it is the one with the caveman. Oh, oh, okay. All right. That's Encino Man. All right. I don't remember a whole lot about it. I just, I just remember that Polly Shore and somebody else find a find a caveman. Something like that. That that's really all I remember about that movie. I'm gonna have to watch that again. It's a lot of movies I gotta watch again, actually. Ooh, man. This playlist kicks ass. Wow. Synthwave. Oh, if you guys are into Synthwave, check out a band called Wave Shaper. Oh my god. Just amazing. Amazing. Wave Shaper. Like the greatest thing I've ever heard. Let's see. And Brendan and Samwise himself. Cheers, need that quality. Watch it, it's got charm. Sean Austin. Yeah, send that Spotify link on Steam as well. Okay, no problem. I will do that when I'm done painting. You're, you're probably gonna have to remind me, but yeah, I'll, I'll do that when I'm done painting. Yeah, totally. Wave Shaper. I mean, you can just search it, but yeah, yeah. I don't actually use Spotify when I'm not streaming. I actually use uh, Google Play Music. Or no, it's not, it's, uh, it's YouTube Music now, isn't it? Yeah, I use that thing, yeah. It's like, I totally pay it. Uh, oh, that was about to come off like an I'm better than you thing, but uh, I didn't mean it that way. Uh, like I pay for um, for YouTube premium. Uh, actually, I started out paying for Google Play Music back in the day, like several years ago. Well, I say back in the day, like it was the 90s. So. But no, like a couple years ago, I started out paying for Google Play Music because I wanted a music streaming thing. This is before Spotify was really too much of a thing. I guess it existed at the time, but it wasn't really big yet. And so I started I started using Google Play Music and I liked it. And then at some point they introduced um, YouTube Premium. Uh, it was called YouTube Red at the time. And then they're like, hey, if you have Google, if you have a Google Play Music subscription, uh, you're gonna get uh, YouTube Red for free with your subscription, like at no additional charge. And I was like, oh, that's cool. And at the time, I was just like, yeah, all right, whatever. Uh, and I did not realize how much I was going to end up liking YouTube Premium. Oh my god, YouTube Premium is the shit. Uh, okay, the first of all, no ads, ever. And like, okay, yeah, you can just use an ad blocker and you won't get ads on YouTube and stuff, and that's, that's fine. Um, except 
when you when you don't get ads with YouTube Premium, you are not then you know basically you're not then pirating content, basically. So if, if you're using an ad blocker and going on YouTube, you are essentially pirating YouTube. Um, anyway, so I'm not doing that, but YouTube YouTube Premium also has some other great features, such as if you watch a lot of YouTube on your phone, like I do. Uh, it it has this feature called background listening, which is fantastic. Uh, so basically, you can put you know any YouTube video on your phone, and then turn the screen off and just like put your phone in your pocket. So if if you're at work or something, and you know like you can listen to something but you can't watch a video, like that's that's basically my situation at work. Like I can listen to whatever I want, but you know I can't I can't really watch a video while I'm while I'm doing my job. Man, background listening, just the thing you need. So I end up using that all the time. So like that that feature alone makes makes YouTube premium worth it for me. Um anyway, let's see. What am I missing? Hang on. I've been smashing gunship lately. Nice synth mix there. Oh, I gotta check that out. Okay. And some great film slips as well. I'm on my phone. If I swap apps, I miss the stream. Oh, man, lame. No pirating. Yar, where be the fun in that? <laughs> hey, you know what? I'm not I'm not saying don't pirate stuff. I'm just I'm just saying that using adblock is piracy. Basically. I'm not I'm not I'm not telling anyone what to do. You know, you can do it if you want. You're you're your own person. You can make your own decisions. I'm just, I'm just saying that's what it is, you know. So I'm I'm I am by no means saying don't do that. Just, you know, let's let's call it what it is, you know. Um let's see. YouTube send shadow sponsorship deals. <laughs> Uh, I always end up sounding like a commercial for the thing that I'm talking about, don't I? Uh, I'm I'm really not trying to do that. I just I just like the thing, and so I'm talking about it. But yeah, I'm I'm just saying like you can you can use ad block and then you won't have any you won't have any ads on your on your YouTube videos or whatever. But then you don't you don't get the background listening thing. You know that that is only a feature in YouTube Premium. Admin health emergency room, absolutely. Ugh, ads. Oh my God. Spotify ads. Oof, that's that's so rough. I wish this playlist was on. Uh... Oh, you know, actually, I don't know that it isn't on YouTube Music. I should I should probably check that out. Just means you believe in the thing you're discussing. I hope it comes off that way. Yeah, I don't. I don't want to sound like I'm, you know, just advertising for, for whatever. Especially for like YouTube and Google stuff. You know, I don't. I don't want to sound like I'm advertising for that. I'm just. I'm just saying that's that's the service that I use and I like it. You know. Anyway. Okay. Just a bit in there. That line a little straighter. Something like that, I guess. I don't know. Probably do the should probably do the thumb. A little there. Did this. In there. Right in there. Ah, this playlist is so good. This is all royalty free. Oof. I love it. Okay. I think we're good. I think we're good on I think we're good for the white on this one. I think oh wait, no, I see some spots I missed. Oh actually I missed some green on the on the Warhammer also. Let's see. 
Yeah, if you already have deals and yet me and Irish keep pushing for more sponsorship, I'm gonna be annoyed. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, yeah. But no, no, I don't. I don't have any deals. No. I'm not big enough for anyone to sponsor me. Are you kidding? Like, how, how big do you even have to be to get sponsors? I mean, definitely bigger than I am. I mean, who the, who the fuck watches my stuff? Let's see. I've got... I've currently got two viewers, so... I don't... I don't think anybody's gonna sponsor, you know, a, a, a channel that gets, you know, two viewers consistently, you know? Okay, how about that? Does that, does that look better? Hey, you know, not that I'm... I'm not complaining about the... the size of my viewer base or anything. I mean, I like you guys. Just... Uh... Yeah, I mean, I just I just do this for fun. It's a it's a fun hobby. I'm not trying to. This is, I'm I mean I wouldn't say no to doing it professionally, but I'm not, I'm not like out to do this professionally, like, uh, just, I'm, like that's not that's not why I, am doing this or anything. It's, it's just fun, you know. It's a fun thing to do. I figure, hey, I do this stuff anyway. I paint models and play video games anyway. Why not? Why not do it on the internet? You know, so I'm I'm sitting here talking to myself while I'm doing it. I might as well do that into a microphone. I might as well I might as well do the things into a camera and talk to myself into a microphone on the internet, right? And then, you know, if if I happen to, you know, gain a significant viewer base in the process, that's cool. But uh, I don't I don't need that necessarily. I'm I'm happy just. I'm happy just hanging out with, uh, with you couple of, with, like, Camulus and Toker and whoever else is here. You know, that's fine. Yeah, okay, I missed that spot right there. And then... Bit right there. There. Okay. I do, and Toker does. We are clearly enough, haha. <laughs> Uh, I've seen people with 1k subs get sponsored. No idea how, but they were. Oh, well, okay. I don't know. I mean, I guess I technically have more subscribers than that. However, uh, I feel like most of those, most of my subscribe, most of the, the people who, who constitute the subscribership that you see when you, like, look at my channel it says it'll say like you know 4.7k subscribers or something like that most of those people subscribe to see like the elite dangerous content i was doing back in the day i'm not doing that anymore I, uh, i'm not really interested and in, i'm not really interested in elite dangerous uh anymore so um yeah i don't i don't know like most of that viewership is uh not super relevant most most of that the, the majority of that number doesn't mean anything, really. And like, even if I did whip out some Elite Dangerous content, you know, or something like that, it wouldn't be the only thing I did on this channel. Like, the whole, the point of this channel is, is not to do like one thing. It's not, it's not, nece it's not necessarily a video game channel. It's not necessarily, you know, a painting or hobby channel. It is a do whatever I want on the internet channel, you know? So if I feel like playing video games on this channel, then I'm gonna play video games on this channel. If I feel like painting on this channel, then I'm gonna paint on this channel. And if I feel like doing 3D printing, then I'm gonna do that. And if I suddenly feel like going out and, uh, uh, I can't think of another thing. Um, I don't know, ra raising chickens or something, then I'm, then I'm gonna do that on the channel. You know, whatever I'm in, it's a, it's a whatever I'm into at the moment channel. You know, that's that's what this is. You know, it's it's not a it's not an I'm gonna play video games and I'm only gonna play this video game. Meh. That's so limiting. I can't do that. My my interest cycle. I have, you know, I I get really into a thing, and then, uh, 
and then I kind of lose interest in it, and then I'm like, oh, but now I'm really into this other thing, you know? Like, like I was very into Elden Ring for a moment, uh, and now I'm like, I don't want to play Elden Ring at all. <laughs> yeah, so right now I'm pretty into Battletech, but I bet in like, you know, one to six months I'll be like, I don't want to play fucking Battletech, get the fuck out of here, you know? Something like that. Let's see. Um, win. <laughs> but yeah, do what you want. If you're not happy, why do it, man? Well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, this is this is the thing I want to do right now. I want to... At the moment, I'm into, like, painting and playing video games. You know? And that's, that's a pretty universal thing for me to be into. Like, painting and playing video games. You know? But, like, the kind of games that I'm into vary a lot. The kind of things I want to paint vary a lot, and I don't always want to paint, and I don't always want to play video games. Sometimes I wanna... Sometimes I wanna do other stuff. I don't know. If I suddenly wanna start doing movie reviews or, or something like that, you know, then I'm gonna do that. And uh, I'll, I'll do it on this channel, and people can either watch it or not, and that's fine. You know. But, uh, you know, that's... That's what this channel is, so I just... I don't know. I don't want anyone having the impression that this is like, uh... Uh, this is like the main thing for there. There is no main thing for this channel, is what I'm trying to say. You know, it, the the main thing is is my whim, my my fancy, basically. Anyway, let's talk about something else. Let's see. Okay, I'm gonna put some flow improver in my alt do and gray, and have that thing fall off. Sweet. I totally planned that. Okay, there we go. Put that right back on there. Alrighty. Looking for a way to make some quick cash? Well, making money with Ooh, more Spotify ads. Easy, okay. I love riding my bike around the city. All right, two more mechs to paint white on, and then we'll come back and uh, do the blue. Yeah, we got it. We got to bring that blue back a little bit. And then, uh, yeah. And then we can do some dry brushing, I guess. After that. Oh, I missed some green right there. Look at that. Okay, let's uh, let's green that up. I totally have that green out right now. Let's just let's get that. I missed a few spots here, huh? Okay, there we go. Oh, there's a little tear right there. Some of these spots I did not miss, like this right here. I don't know if you can see this, but that. That's a spot where the paint has torn when it when it's dried. Like the the contrast paints. That's what I was saying yesterday. Contrast paints are very convenient and they're very nice and I like them a lot. But once they dry, you get these little spots where the paint tears, and that that's kind of annoying because you have to go back and kind of touch it up like this. And it doesn't take very long to touch it up. It's it's fine. I mean the the overall result is very good. You know. Like, I w if I had to rate these paints, I'd give them, like, a 98 out of 100, right? Or, you know, like a like a, like a 9.5 out of 10, or a 9.8 out of 10, I guess, if I were going to reduce that, right? Um, but yeah, just that, the little, that little annoying bit where, oh, right, right here, there's a little, there's a little tear right there. It's, it's very weak. The contrast paint is, it just, uh, it adheres very weakly. It adheres to itself and the surface very weakly. So, so definitely, if you're going to use contrast paints, varnish, varnish when you're when you're done painting that model. You know, just just make sure that that contrast paint is not gonna you know come off in some way. You definitely have to do that. Okay. All right. So we've got. A little bit more all through in gray here. We've got flow improver mixed in. I mean, there's already flow improver mixed into it in the bottle, but yeah, sometimes we got to put more than that in it. So, okay. I'm going to start with the leg because that's what I feel like. And then that's the thing that we're going to do. There. There. Over here, 
down the side there. Okay, there we go. Let's see. Yeah, I'm quite curious about some of the Vallejo speed range. Uh, some, some come out looking very nice. The Vallejo speed range? Are you talking about the army paint or speed paints? I would love to get, I would love to get speed paints. I was looking for those on Amazon, but they're not necessarily available yet. Like, I've, I've seen people using them on YouTube and stuff, and I want them. I want to buy the entire set of speed paints. Like, bring them out already. I will, I will buy them right now. If, if they were on Amazon right now, I would just buy the entire set. That would be great. I want them so badly. But, um, yeah. No, I've, I've definitely seen them. I've definitely seen quite a few videos about speed paints. They look fantastic. You know, I don't, I don't know that they'll, I don't know that they'll replace contrast paints or anything like that. But they'll definitely supplement them, you know. Like I, I feel like each paint has, has its function, you know. Each each paint is good for, like a different situation, and stuff. Like contrast paints are not good for for every situation, and you know regular paints are not necessarily the best choice for every situation so yeah i i don't know let's see um crap yeah i was thinking of other paints and my brain mixed them up in the desire to type too fast ah yes okay um i've i heard somewhere uh i i don't remember where but i heard probably just on some random YouTube video I was watching or something, that Vallejo was also going to come out with a with a thing that's like contrast paints, but I don't I don't know if that's true. I mean I would I would think that they'd probably do that, because you know they're a they're a big paint manufacturer also. So I I I definitely heard that somewhere, but I didn't can't remember where and it's definitely unsubstantiated at this point so I mean probably you know don't don't like take my word for that or anything Just, yeah but speed paint yeah army painter speed paint I definitely want army paint if I, if I went on Amazon right now and it were in stock I'd just buy it you know if even if it costs like 100 200 dollars I'd just buy it right now boom purchased you know the whole set i want the whole set of speed paints and they come in dropper bottles oh my god why can't gw paints just come in dropper bottles why does gw have to try and be different and edgy and stuff just put your damn paint in dropper bottles i'm doing it anyway you're making me spend more money on dropper bottles but uh but contrast paint just like all the army painter paints in fact just come in dropper bottles all of everyone else's paints other than GW come in dropper bottles. You know, like you buy you buy some Vallejo paints, they come in dropper bottles. You buy some uh, some Army Painter paints, they come in dropper bottles. You know, like everyone else has figured this out. Why can't GW figure this out? I mean, GW paints are great paints. I mean, I'm using them right now, so clearly they're good. But yeah. Let's see. Okay, I need to bounce and stretch my legs to keep to keep on the go, or else I'm not gonna want to get up and keep working. Uh, keep talking lots, and I will come back and watch the vid later on. Okay. All right. Yeah, that's cool, man. I mean, thanks for stopping by and stuff. Yeah. Um. But yeah. No. This is basically what I'm saying. I'm. I just. I'm talking to myself into a microphone. So. You know. If. Uh, if you choose to listen to me. Then, uh, then that's cool, you know. You know, if it turns into a conversation, I'm cool with that too. But basically, just uh, I'm just doing stuff and talking to myself. <laughs> ah, I gotta lower this microphone a little bit. Okay, there. Now it's now it's slightly more in front of my face. Oh my god! Ah. Oh, I hurt my back the other day, and uh, it sucks. It really sucks. 
Uh, I'm not going to work tomorrow. I can, uh, I've been, I've barely been able to walk, like, all weekend. Like, I left work a couple, a couple of times early this week because of this, and, uh, it, it finally start, it's finally starting to feel like it's getting better. Finally. Oh my gosh. But it, it still hurts. So, yeah. Back pain is, like, the worst. Nobody should ever have to have back pain. Ugh. Yeah. Back pain sucks. The, you've oh, Spotify ad. How did the Sprite at McDonald's get so spicy deal? Let me know if you How did the Sprite at McDonald's get so spicy? Order ahead on the app. Hmm. Price and participation may vary. Spicy Sprite. Weird. Is there, is there such a thing as a spicy soda? Hmm. Wow. Cajun style Sprite. That would be, that would be kind of a weird thing. I don't, I don't really drink soda. But when I did. Hmm. Would I have consumed Cajun style Sprite? Not that that's a thing. Oh, I heard the steam thing. I'll, I'll check it in a second there. Okay. Let me let me just finish this leg part and, I'll, and then I'll check steam. You got foot parts H. This is not looking too bad. It does look a little dirtier than I intended it to look, but I think it's I think it's fine. Okay. All right, let me swizzle my brush off here, and then we'll uh, we'll check steam here. Okay. Oh my God, my back. Okay. Oh, what if the keyboard were on? That would be super helpful, wouldn't it? And the mouse would actually move. Okay. Here we go. Oh, The Legend of Neil, I forgot about that. Okay. One of my favorite gunship songs and film clips. Okay, I'll have to check that out after the stream because uh, I'm I'm sure that that is not royalty free, so I can't I won't be able to play it on the stream. But yeah. Okay. Oh yeah, and I'll send you the after the stream, I'll send you the link for uh wait, I'll send you a link for Wave Shaper. Yeah. Word. You're a Dr. Pepper guy, Toker. Uh, back when I drank soda, I was uh, I was basically a Mountain Dew person. That was that was the soda I liked. Now I basically just drink water. But you know, Dr. Pepper was okay. It was it was pretty good soda. I mean, I guess it still is a pretty good soda. <sighs> Drinking water into the microphone. Yeah. <sighs> okay. Anyway, all right. Let's resume painting white. Resume. Okay. Man, this playlist is just kicking ass. This, uh, if anybody was wondering, this playlist is called Stream Beats. It's the uh, it's the synthwave playlist on Stream Beats. Super good. There are totally other playlists on Stream Beats, but I like the synthwave one. Not that I don't like the other ones, just uh, I like this one the most. And since I can play whatever I want, uh, I'm going to play Synthwave. Yeah. Hmm. 
Okay. This is looking cool. It's got a lot of little, like, parts. <laughs> I mean, of course it does as a robot, but it's got a lot of little, like, intricate, little detail-y things on his legs here. Let's see. do this I should just go over this one it looks patchy if I already did it so I'll just go over that again I mean this all through in gray is kind of thin so it's probably gonna look a little patchy but I don't know I think uh, I think it's coming out okay I did put a bunch of flow improver in it Let's do that there. Yeah, something like that. Oh, shit. <laughs> ah, holding my hand too close to the palette. <laughs> Damn it. Ah, now I got blue on me. Ah, look at that. That sucks. Let's see. Yeah, I looked up that Galaxy Quest documentary. It's called Never Surrender. Paywalled, but had a ton of fun watching the free behind the scenes videos. Oh, man, I completely forgot about that. Man. Stuff often does not like stick in my memory. That's, that's, a, that's a common complaint about me that other people have. Like, kind of have a one-track mind like I'm I, I'm just focusing on like whatever thing is like foremost in my mind at the moment and like everything else kind of gets excluded and I forget about it and then people are like hey did you do that that thing or, or whatever and I'm like oh no I totally forgot about that and then uh, yeah and a lot of times people assume, uh, you know, like I didn't, I didn't like a thing or I didn't want to do a thing because I forgot about it. And that's, that's genuinely, that's genuinely not what it is. You know, it's, I, I don't know. I, I don't know how to not focus on a thing. Like, and like sometimes I have this tendency to like hyper focus on a thing to the, to a, a very great degree. And uh, to to such a degree that I that I'm even excluding, you know, things that are immediately around me. I'm just focused on, you know, a particular thing that I'm doing, or a, or a problem, or something like that. A problem I'm trying to solve, or or whatever. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I guess, I guess it's kind of a problem. Well, it's eh, it's not exactly a problem, but it's a thing about me, I guess. Was gonna say I'm very one tracked. Annoys my wife greatly. Haha. -ha. Uh, yeah. My my ex girlfriend did not like that about me. I think that was one of her largest complaints about me is that uh, I would I would forget to do stuff all the time. You know, I would, yeah. I would I would say, hey, okay, I'll do that thing, and then I completely forget to do that thing. You know? And it, and it's not that I don't intend to do the thing. I I totally do intend to do it, but. You know, that's, I often say to people, okay, I will do that thing, but you're going to have to remind me about it, you know? And I, and I think that sometimes people mean, or people take that to mean that I'm, that I'm reluctantly accepting whatever it, it was that I said I'm going to do, but that, that's not it. It's just that I'll, I'll start doing something else, you know, and then... I, I don't remember until like you know like days later or something I'm like oh shit I forgot to do that thing so no I'm, I'm genuinely saying like you have to remind me otherwise it's it's just not in my mind I don't know and it's not because I'm not it's not because I don't want to do it or or anything like that it's just I don't I don't remember <laughs> you know so yeah one one tracked I guess that's, I guess it's not super typical 
but that is that is what it is. Like I I just get into a thing, and then that's like all I can kind of focus on. And I just have to kind of do that thing. Hmm, it's weird. Is it is it weird? I don't know. Maybe it's not weird. Maybe it's more common than I think it is. I have no idea, actually. Hmm. Yeah, I guess I actually don't know. How I wonder how common that is. Other people, I think, seem able to retain a greater number of instructions for longer periods of time than I can. But like for example, when I'm at work, I often have to leave myself little notes. I have to I, I often end up with little post-it notes all over my monitor. You know, j just to do like simple things like remember to close the back door at 6:30 or something like that, you know? Cuz like I'll I'll start uh I don't know, I'll start like doing a report or I'll start uh I don't know, I'll start doing a doing a calibration or I'll start doing something else and then all of a sudden it's like 8 30 I'm like oh crap I forgot to close that door you know so just just like little little things like that I don't I don't know yep exactly okay well I'm, I'm glad I'm not the only one with this problem it's mm, I don't know I don't think it's that big of a deal but I think other people think it's a big deal. Yeah. Like I, like like I just said, I think other people assume that uh, you know that I just didn't want to do whatever it was they asked me to do or something. And <sighs> genuinely, that is not it. But you know, then but nobody takes the time. To like talk to you and understand, you know, what the problem actually is. They just, they just assume, you know, oh well, that guy must be an asshole. He didn't do this thing, you know, and then, and then uh, that just becomes the mo, and then you just get treated like that, you know, because you forgot, you forgot to do a thing one time. Oh man, you know, so now I just, I just leave myself notes at work and stuff and. Uh, you know, just in my personal life, it's not it's not such a big problem, uh, unless, uh, well, I mean, like, yeah, like you're like you're saying your 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 wife finds it very annoying. Yeah, my ex girlfriend found that very annoying. In fact, that's probably the biggest reason that she's my ex girlfriend. <laughs> I think. You know, I would just I would just forget stuff basically. Yeah. And it's. It's not that I don't care. It's just that I don't fucking remember. <laughs> but also, I guess at a certain point if you are the other party, if you're if you're the person like asking for the thing to be done and the person you're asking isn't doing it, you know, eventually the reason becomes irrelevant to you. And you know the the whether or not the intent is malicious, it the result is the same. You know, like it's it still sucks when that that thing you asked for, you know, didn't get done, or you know you asked for a thing and you didn't get it, uh, and whether or not the person you asked intended to be a dick about it. They were a dick about it, you know. So whether whether or not I intended to do the thing or not, I still didn't do the thing, you know. So I don't know. There are there are points on both sides for that. I can. Oh god, my back. Oh, it hurts so much. Holy shit. Hold on. Okay. 
Ow. Yeah, ow. Yeah, I can, I can, I guess I can see both sides of the argument, but, you know, being in that situation, being the person that that's happening to, I mean, I got to side with myself here, you know, but both sides have valid points, you know, you don't intend, you don't intend to be an asshole by not doing the thing, you know, you just forgot. You were focused on something else. And that's fine. But also, that person asked you to do that thing. And you said you would. And you didn't. So... <sighs> who Who's in the right? Who's in the wrong? I don't know. I don't, I don't really know where the, the ethics of that, that argument go. I, I really don't know. It's a complicated situation. So, I mean, you it's not like you can change the way your brain works very easily. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Weird subject to talk about while painting, huh? Yeah. Anyway. I don't know. Feel free to... Fr Feel free to throw out topics. Hmm. Anyway, okay. So I just got to do like the inside of this arm, and then we're and then we're done with the white on this mech, and then we'll go back. Oh, and then we'll well and then we'll do the white on the next mech, and then we'll uh, and then we'll go back and bring back the blue a little bit, and then we'll do some dry brushing. I think we will go and dry brush Pallid Witch Flash all over these mechs. Like on the green parts and the white parts and the blue parts, I think. I hope that'll look good, I think. I think that'll look good, right? Although maybe I should do a lighter green first. Hmm. Although if I were going to do a lighter green, I probably should have done that before I painted red and blue on this, but we'll try Pallid Witch Flesh, and if that doesn't look good, I mean, we can just go back over it with the Dark Angel's green, you know. So, we can just kind of erase it. You know, we'll just, we'll just try it. You know, it, it's like the, it's like the name of that podcast, Paint Bravely, you know. Sometimes you just gotta try stuff. So I'm, you know, I'm not really sure what'll work sometimes. And so I just try stuff. I just, I take a paint and I go, all right, I'm gonna use this paint to do this thing. And then I do that. And then there's a Spotify ad, bam. Nah, oof, unlike your mild time. Is that a Gatorade commercial? Hmm. I Gatorade in a minute. <laughs> Brondo, the thirst mutilator. <laughs> you want us to put water on it? Like, like out the toilet? But Brondo's got what plants crave. <laughs> Let's see. Anyway. Damn, this playlist is good. Oh, it's so good. Wow. This song is called Apparatus. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. How's that look? Does that look pretty good? Probably not, but I think we're going to go with it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Okay. Cool. Cool. Very cool. Okay. Nice. 
Okay, swizzle my brush around a little bit there. All right. Ah, oh my god, my back. Fuck. Ah. Woo! Ah. Boy, this gray just becomes, or the this all through and gray just becomes unusable, very quickly. Like, look at look how quickly that just like separates into its base components. I wish it would not do that so fast, but uh, whatever, that's fine. We'll put down some more. It's cool. This is the last mech we need to actually use all through and gray on right now. Finally gonna do the, uh, I keep on, I wanna call this like the Bushwhacker and the Marauder and stuff. No, it's, uh, what is this called? The Blackjack. We're gonna do the Blackjack right now. Okay. That's what it is. It's the Blackjack. Welcome to the Circus of Values. Ah, ha, ha. Yeah, anyway. Oh man, there's a game I haven't played in a minute. Bioshock. You know, I, okay, so I never beat the first Bioshock. I never played the second Bioshock. But I did beat Bioshock Infinite and all its DLC. And that was very good. And when I beat Bioshock Infinite, it made me want to go back and play uh, all the other Bioshock games. And that was about... Well, no, it wasn't. Let's see. And then later on, after that happened, uh, all the Bioshock Remastered games came out. And that was really cool because if you had all the Bioshock games on Steam, then you got all the remastered ones, well, remastered one and two, then you got the remasters for free, which was awesome because I, I did have all those on Steam. I mean, I do have all those on Steam. So that was cool. And so I tried to go back and play the first Bioshock again. And you know, I got I got a little ways in it, but uh, you know, the the same thing basically happened as when I tried to play Bioshock for the first time. Wow, it's it doesn't exactly catch my interest. Like it it's good, you know, it's it's a good story and everything, but like the gameplay is basically a lot of just like walk through this tube, now 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 shoot this guy, now walk through this tube. And uh you know, it's it's fine. I mean, it's you know, it's a shooter and stuff and uh it has shooter mechanics and and everything. And you know, the the uh, what is it called? Atom and stuff. That that stuff is cool. Where you you get, you know, kind of. What what is it called? Uh, I forgot what it's called. But you know, basically where you get like magic powers and stuff. It's not it's not magic, but what whatever it's called. Um, is the the stuff it is the stuff it takes to do it called Atom or what? I forgot what I forgot what everything was called. Oh my god, I haven't played Bioshock in so long. But um. Yeah, I mean, it was, it was fine, and the story was interesting, but, man, the, the gameplay, it was a lot of, uh, just back and forth, trudging, and going here, and going there, and just walking through these things, and occasionally a dude jumps out at you, and, okay. So, I don't know. But Bioshock Infinite was really good. Man, Bioshock Infinite was fantastic. Like, that was... That was one of the better games I've, I've probably ever played, actually, Bioshock Infinite. Like, I don't want to... I don't want to spoil any story or anything for people who haven't played it. And if you haven't played... If you have not played Bioshock Infinite, you don't need to have played any of the other Bioshock games to know what's going on. Uh, just, just go play Bioshock Infinite. Yeah. It's so good. And, you know, there, there is a good amount of, like, just kind of getting to places, but not as much as the other Bioshock games. Like, basically... When you need to get to a new area in Bioshock Infinite, it kind of just... 
it almost just puts you there. No, like not exactly, but it's but it's much better. Job. Like the basically the stuff that Luckily, the elements that lost my interest in in the, in the original Bioshock so well, were almost not really present really in in Bioshock Infinite. It was it was just really good the whole time, you know. There were there were like zero points where I where I started to lose interest in Bioshock Infinite. So yeah, I, I beat that and I beat all the DLC and it was it was great. It was just great. So I definitely recommend Bioshock Infinite if you haven't played that. Even if you have played it, like go back and play it again. It's amazing. Yeah. Alright. What time is it? Wow, I've been doing this for an hour and a half already. Jeez. Okay. So, yeah. Just stuff. Just stuff like that. Look is so good. You know, a game also has an excellent soundtrack. Uh, and it's a game that came out recently. Uh, it's called The Ascent. Um, the Ascent is a it's a uh, top down like twin stick shooter, like a like a run and gun type thing. And it's it's very good. The store like the story is really good. The action is really good. Like the gameplay is really good. There is a fair amount of like walking from like zone to zone and stuff, but at some point uh, early on, you unlock fast travel. And so like at, at some points, at, at most points in the game, you can just call like a, basically like a Johnny cab, you know, from like Total Recall. And uh, you know, that that will help you, you know, get around the arcology that you're in and stuff. Cause it, you know, it's a, it's a cyberpunk game basically. Uh, it's it's like a future cyberpunk type game. You're on another planet, and you're you're in a big arcology type thing. But uh, yeah, you can you can like get around it with uh, with fast travel by taking a taxi to places. Not all of the places, but most of the places you can you can just take a taxi and everything. But uh, I wouldn't mind playing it on the stream, except a lot of the appeal of the game for me is actually the soundtrack. It's 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 very synthwave. It's very uh, it's very cyberpunk. It's 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 excellent. It's really good. And uh, you know it it has co-op both local and over the internet and stuff. You know, so if if you were looking for a co-op game to play with with somebody like sitting on the couch next to you or something, uh, it can actually support up to four players. So just you know, hand out the Xbox controllers or whatever and uh, go to town, basically, you know, and uh, once you beat the game, there's New Game Plus. So you you start a new game and you still have all the equipment and everything that you that you had in your in your current in your previous playthrough, because it's kind of like, uh, you know, like a looter shooter type thing. You know, you get you get weapons and armor, and it has like RPG elements because you you level up, and there's a skill tree and stuff. And yeah, it's it's just very good. It's very it's an excellent game, and it's it's not that expensive. It's what like thirty dollars or something on Steam. Uh, it's it's definitely worth it. And also, if you wait for a sale or something, you can probably get it for for fifteen twenty bucks. If like if you if you saw the ascent. On Steam, for fifteen or twenty bucks, grab it immediately. Wow, it's it's so good. If you if you're into like, if if you're into any kind of like top down isometric type type shooter things, like man, just just grab it. Even if you're not like, if you if you like shooters at all, even not like top down ones, uh, just just pick it up. Just give it a try. Like it, it's Steam. You can refund it if you don't like it. You know, just just give it a try. It's so good. It's so good. I would totally stream it if I could stream the soundtrack, but I I bet you can't. Uh, yeah. Anyway, let's see. Yeah. 
Okay, almost done with the leg. Almost. Almost. And then, fortunately, the blackjack does not have real big arms. So it shouldn't take too long to do this, this white arm. What would have been better than this is if I had just had, like, what is the contrast paint gray called? Like, administ is it... Is it Administratum Gray or something? Is that the is that the contrast paint one? Or oh, or like Apothecary White or something? But I do not have either one of those contrast paints, so that's why I went with this approach, where because I I used the contrast paint to do this green, but I mean as you see I'm doing the basically the classic method of uh, of doing the white and stuff, and it's. It's actually kind of hard to paint white. You know, it's, it's gonna look like crap to some degree. So, we'll just kind of go back over this a little bit. Eh, that doesn't look that good. Anyway, okay, so. Just do a little bit of that. Make it a little bit more solid. Ish. Kind of. Eh. Something like that, I guess. Okay. Hmm. Big patch of white right there. <laughs> okay, maybe that's a little too solid as compared to the arrest the the arrest of it. As compared to the rest of it, that might be that might be more solid than I wanted it to be. But whatever. That's fine. Okay. Oh, nationwide's on my side? Well, that's great. I'm glad they're on my side. Okay. Wow, another ad, an ad right after an ad. That's so cool. Oh, Chick-fil-A has salads. Okay. I haven't been to Chick-fil-A in a minute. It's probably been over a year since I've been to a Chick-fil-A. I wouldn't mind having some Chick-fil-A, actually. I don't think I've eaten a lot of fast food even recently. See. Sounds good. Very much into it. Wow. This is called Neurotronic. The name of the song. I should put I should get that little uh plug-in thing where it where it like displays the name of the song on the stream. I don't know what that plugin's called, but I can just Google it at some point. That would be pretty cool. Would you guys would you guys appreciate that? So, I mean, I often have the Spotify playlist going in the background. Let's see. Okay. Well, this arm is going pretty quickly. I mean, it's not that big. So, there's really not that much of it to cover. But then, uh, once we finish this arm, we can just do the same thing on the blue. And then there's not that much of that to cover. That shouldn't take that long. The blue will cover a little bit better than the Althuan gray. Then uh, everything should be cool. And then we'll dry brush a little bit. Yeah, stuff like that. Oh, it's only a little bit after midnight right now. Hmm, I don't know why I normally expect it to be later. Okay. That. And then a little bit this area. And like that. And then up here. Yeah. It's looking pretty decent. Oh, this is so good. Wow. This music kicks ass. I love Synthwave. Oh my god. 
Synthwave is amazing. All right, I think just the bottom part here. And then I think we'll be ready to do the blue. Just come in like this. Go all the way back here. Like that. Oh, maybe here. There. Yeah, something like that. On the side of this thing. Yeah, oh, maybe right there on the side of that. Yeah, we already got the back. Just go over that a little more. And that. I think that's good. What do you guys think? So look. Adequate <laughs> something. I think it looks okay. Let's see. Okay. Swizzle my brush out here. Okay. And then we're going to go to blue. What blue was I using? Oh, I was using uh, Calidor Sky. On my Davian Max, I used Vallejo Magic Blue. But on these Max, I'm using GW Calidor Sky. Which is basically the same color, but uh, I don't know. Just uh, I have it, so so why not use it? You know. All right, here we go. Let's put a little new Calidor sky down right here. Okay, I probably didn't need quite that much, but okay. So we'll go over all the blue stuff here. Just the just these guns and and this missile thing here and you know basically you, you guys know the drill. We just did it with the white. We're gonna do the the same thing with the blue because we put the black right over this and so we gotta we gotta kind of restore it a little bit. Yeah, and then once we do this, which shouldn't take too long. Then we're gonna take Pallid Witch Flesh and just dry brush uh, basically the whole the whole mech, like each mech. We're gonna, we're gonna just do that, and that hopefully should make make the mechs a little you know poppier, a little a little brighter. Cause I mean this green looks really good I think, but it's very dark. It's very dark. So we need we need some highlights. We definitely need some highlights. Yeah. And because I don't want to sit here and edge highlight each mech, uh, we're just going to dry brush. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with dry brushing. Dry brushing is great. I love dry brushing. And I will use it at every opportunity. Anyone who says there's anything wrong with dry brushing uh, is dumb. <laughs> Should not listen to them. See, okay. So we got these two guns here. Doop, doop. Okay, almost done with this gun. Now I could have left it a little darker on the bottom, I guess. And then it would have been like a Zenithal thing, but you know, because I didn't do that on the rest of the mech, it would have looked fairly weird. Okay, so there are those two guns, and then we'll just do that top missile launcher thing. Get a little bit more blue on the brush here. Right. Just 
do some little areas here. Try to leave the recesses alone. You know, the same thing we just did with the white, but now with the blue. And yeah, it's looking pretty decent. Okay, I've definitely run out of things to talk about, so if somebody wants to give me a topic, that would be great. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. After this, I'm going to watch an A24 movie called uh, The Hole in the Ground, and uh, I... I watched the trailer for it. It's not it's not a new movie. It came out in like 2019. I mean, I haven't seen it yet, so it's it's new to me, but it came out in like 2019 and apparently uh it's about uh this mother who thinks that her kid is uh is like possessed or is an imposter or something like that. And uh I don't know. That's that's really all I know about it at this point, so I'm, I'm fairly excited to watch it. I think it's going to be pretty good. Most A24 movies are pretty good. I mean, you know, there are there are some that are not good, like, ooh, The Lighthouse, for example. That, that movie was not very good. That was an A24 movie that was bad. Um, oh, I probably should have put some red right in that little thing there. Hmm. Eh, that's fine, though, but whatever. But okay, all right, there's there's the blue on the Warhammer. And then we'll do the blue on the Banshee. Okay. All right, so basically for this, I'm just gonna go around here and do that. And then kind of the same thing over here. We'll do, we'll just do the front of that gun. And then Let's see, we'll do we'll do the barrel here. We'll do the barrel of this gun. I mean obviously we'll do the obviously we'll do the barrel on the other gun. Uh, and then I think we'll do the, the side things here too. So, yeah. Something like that. is just the uh, the very quick getting these on the tabletop so I can play battle tech with not gray plastic kind of kind of paint jobs these are not like these are not by any means like award-winning paint jobs or anything you know I mean I'm, I'm sure you guys can tell that but yeah just yeah One day, maybe I will do a, a stream where I do like a really good paint job on something. Like that would that would be cool. I wouldn't I wouldn't mind doing that. I don't know what it would be though. I don't know, like a really cool Space Marine or something. I got an STL file for a, for a really cool Space Marine. So I mean, it's it's technically not a GW thing unless somebody like scanned it and. Uploaded it to Thingiverse or something, but it's like a it's like a Space Marine captain, and he's got like a shield and stuff. And like, wow, he's it's very cool. I would love to print that model and paint it and stuff. I don't know what I would do with it. But yeah. Okay. We'll just do kind of the outside of this. Right there, Do that a little bit. Top of this thing right here. I keep putting the microphone right next to my head. <laughs> it, should be, it should be in front of my mouth. What am I doing? Okay, a little bit like that. That. That's not too bad. How's that look? What do you guys think? 
Okay. And we just got these these other two. And then the dry brushing can commence. Yes. Okay. Oh, that's... Oh, my back. Oh. All right. So not a whole lot to do here. It shouldn't take too long. Just a little bit of this. Just a couple of these and one of these and a little bit of this. <laughs> Maybe we'll leave the barrel on this one kind of darker. I don't know. That. Like this. Mm -hmm. Something like that. I don't know. And then there's kind of a barrel right there, but yeah, I think we'll leave that darker. Okay. And then we'll, uh, we'll do the same thing on the other side. Okay. Man, I love this music. It's super good. Okay. For that. This. This. And this right here. And then the bottom side. Okay, so there's the arm ones. And then we just got these two here. These two like shoulder cannon things. Definitely run out of stuff to talk about. Hmm. Usually I don't run out of stuff to talk about like that, but whatevs. Okay. Whatevs. Maybe I'll just paint in silence for a moment. I don't know. It's not like anyone's watching anyway. I guess I don't have to think of like fun and interesting topics all the time I can't see I hope I got that in the right place couldn't really see what I was doing there it was a weird shadow oh not me let's see I need to put this lower like right here how about that okay Front of this, front of that. That looks pretty good. Probably do the inside. Up there. Okay, and then we'll just do the uh, the other one. And then it's just those barrels on the, uh, not the bushwhacker, the, oh my god, what is it called? The blackjack. Just the barrels on the blackjack. That is what we'll have to do.
definitely run out of topics. So okay, we'll just paint in silence if nobody wants to contribute a topic. That's cool. Well, I think of something. Here we go. Okay, three out of four. Right. Now, hmm, barrels. Well, let's see. How should we do this? Maybe I'll leave the actual barrel part a little bit dark. And then just do like the the tip here and the and the part that joins it to the arm. Hmm. Something like that. Why not? Let's let's see how that looks. If it sucks, we can change it. No, I think that's good. I think that looks good. Let's see. Yeah. Yeah, okay. That is what I'll do. That won't even take very long. Okay. Right. Other side? That doesn't look too bad. Let's see. What do you guys think? I think it's okay. Yeah, I think we're gonna go with that approach for this for this Mac. These parts over here. That's pretty good. I'm happy with that. All right, time for dry brushing. Yes, dry brushing. Okay. Okay. As soon as my back stops already. Okay. All right. So now we're gonna clean out our number three brush here with the master's brush cleaner. Good run. Now here, try this. Gator, right? Yeah, 
It's rapid rehydration plus a specialized blend of five electrolytes. Put the little cap back on. Unlike your mild time, now let's get back at it. And I hang that from my microphone boom arm. Tap the banner to learn more. Okay. Okay, now we're going to do dry brushing. Let's use... Hmm, what dry brush are we going to use? I think we're going to use... Well, I don't know. I have some choices here. I think we'll go... I think we'll go with this one. I think we'll go with our... With our generic Amazon, uh, you know... Just rando dry brush. This, this is a pretty good dry brush. This is a pretty good mop. It's not as good as my other... It's not as good as my first mop, but it's still a pretty good mop. <laughs> um, okay, we're going to use... There we go. We're going to use the regular palette. And we're going to put the Pallid Witch Flesh on it. This might look like crap. I don't actually know. Oh, there we go. Okay. I actually have no idea how this is going to look. This is this is really an experiment that we're trying for the first time live on camera. So, all right, let's kind of mash that into the bristles, and then we'll work that off over here and stuff. And um, a lot of times what I do is like, I try it out on the base uh, and I can kind of see that. I, I, can, I can see that I still have too much paint in my bristles here. So we'll work some more off. But you know, in this case, uh, I, I sprayed primer all over the bases, so they're white. Okay, so let's, let's see. Uh, now of course I can't really see that on the white parts, but let's see. What about the green? Okay. That looks pretty good. Maybe if I hold it under the camera, you guys will be able to see it. Yeah, that looks decent. I like it. Not bad at all. Ooh. Quite good, in fact. That's... Yeah, that's probably not going to show up on the white, but... The rest of it, wow. Ooh. Can you guys... Can you guys see this? That looks... Really good. Ooh. Okay. Yeah, I'm I'm happy with this. Wow. I think this was a good choice. I didn't really know how it was gonna work out, but it seems uh, it seems good. Yeah. Ooh, that looks great. Just a just a nice little highlight to the whole Mac. Look at that. Oh, I got it a little heavy on that barrel, but yeah, that's okay. That's fine. A bit more than there. Possibly on the back of the foot, right in right in this area. I'm not going to worry about it too much on the white. I mean, there, there's only so much you can do to highlight, you know, white, basically. You know, white white can only get so white. Um, but, yeah, the rest of it, man, that looks, that looks super good. Wow. You know, for just a, just a, like, quick, you know, just kind of 
rough paint job. Like, that looks pretty good. Yeah. I'm fairly happy with that. All right. Let's do that for the rest of them. Cool. I mean, I think this is pretty much the extent of the paint job we're going to do. And then I'll put some... some. Uh, I think we're going to do... Uh, not this. So this here is, is Vallejo Brown Earth. So we're not going to use this. I think we're... Well, we might use this, actually. Let's see. I was going to say that we would use Vallejo Dark Earth, but... Let's see. Yeah, this is... This is good. Uh, I think... Yeah, I think we could go with... I think we can go... I think we can... Let me say that sentence correctly. I think we can get away with using the Vallejo Brown Earth on their on their bases in that way. I don't have to go into the toolbox under my desk and get out the thing I was originally planning to get out. So. Which I should have done beforehand, but I didn't. So. You know, there's that. Uh, anyway, okay, That's, that seems good. Let's start in the back. Okay. Oh yeah, that looks great. Doing the banshee now. Yeah. Yeah. Look at this. This is awesome. I mean, it's a banshee, but it's not an awesome. It's a banshee. Get it? That's a that's a battle tech joke. Um, anyway, but yeah, no, this looks, this looks fairly good. As a fitness instructor, I, wasn't, I wasn't actually expecting it to look this good, but it looks pretty good. Which is why I tell my clients to rehydrate with Gatorade. It's rapid rehydration. Plus he tells his clients to rehydrate with Gatorade. What a guy. Tilt it towards your face. Isn't he amazing? Boom. Perfect technique. You should win a prize for telling his clients to rehydrate with Gatorade. He's, he's such a hero. Okay, anyway, enough of that. <laughs> okay. Let's see. Right. I think we've got it pretty much everywhere there. Maybe the inside of the foot or the knee or something. A little bit more, but yeah, basically, basically that's pretty decent. Let's see. Yeah. Okay. Even even on camera, that looks pretty good. I think that's that's showing up nicely. Yes. What do you guys think? Is that. Is that a good is that a good fifth Crucis Lancers paint scheme? Okay, so now we're gonna do the roughneck. And then we're gonna do the blackjack. And then we'll put some stuff on their bases. And then that'll be it for tonight. So I'm gonna put some more pallet witch flesh on my pellet. And we'll do the next mech. Okay. Just get most of that off. Test it out on the base. I think that's maybe a little more. Okay. I think that's good. Let's see. So we'll start in the back. Oh, that's a little too much. Yeah, okay, there we go. There we go. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. That's, okay, got a little bit too much on the brush, but... That's that's fine. It's not, you know, it's not hurting it. It's that's okay. Looks a uh, maybe a little bit streaky. A little tiny bit. 
but mostly it's it's fine. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna try and correct it. I'm just gonna keep going. We're just gonna move forward. A bit more up there. Inside of the leg. Okay. Yep. 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 There we go. Stuff like that. Yeah, it's a little thick. It's a little thick, but. Definitely had a little bit too much on the brush here. But you know, overall, that's that's fine. That's yeah, that's fine. Okay, there we go. Let's see, what does that look like on camera? Yeah, it's a little bit thicker than I actually intended it to, to come out, but you know, it is it is by no means ruined or anything like that. So Okay. And then the blackjack. We'll just get the rest of the paint there. And wipe it off over here on the paper towel. Go. That seems okay. Yeah, that's a good amount there. Okay. Let's do... Oof, I really covered that gun a lot. <laughs> Jeez. Wow, that's way heavier on the on those gun barrels than I actually wanted it to be. Damn. Hmm. I don't know if I like that. That, hmm. I may need to fix that a little bit. Possibly. Let's see. Let's do the rest of it, and then uh, and then we'll see. Man, that that really works on the cockpits. I think. Wow, that looks super good. Okay, much better on these guns. Yep. Yep. Okay. Not too bad. Not too bad. Yeah. Great. A little bit right there. I don't know. What do you guys think? Is that is that too much on the guns? It's it's a bit, right? Hmm. It's it's a little streaky on the guns, I think. Might uh might need to do a thing, but otherwise, let's see. I think we need a little bit more right in there. Just in this area. Up here. Maybe maybe right in there. Yeah, okay. I think that's pretty good. This right here. Okay. Yeah, I think I think we're just gonna try and fix those guns a little bit. That's that's too much. That's too much. Okay, so I'm gonna clean out my dry brush. And then uh, I think I think what we'll do is we will attempt to uh, we'll attempt to fix the guns with uh, either a wash or a contrast paint. Uh, I think I think probably a wash would do it. Let's see. But I think they're both kind of in the same place. Uh, I think my, my washes and my contrast paints are both on the same shelf up here. So, crap. Uh, so I guess whichever one I happen to grab first will be the thing that we do. It, basically, it'll it'll look very similar. So it doesn't, doesn't really matter. Um, okay, let's see. Uh, am I looking at any of them? I think I'm looking at at a blue contrast paint right now. Let's see. Okay, let me stick my brush in the little hanger thing here. Okay. And then, uh, okay, can I reach that high up? Not really, one sec.
Okay. Yep, here we go. We've got some Talisar blue contrast paint right here. Okay, this is this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna take our Talisar blue, and we're gonna take, uh, I don't know, a brush. We'll take, uh, what brush is right here? Ah, good, okay, we'll take our number three, or zero three. Okay, and then we'll take some Talisar blue. Is this dried up in the in the cap here? Crap. Ah, man, I'm gonna waste all my paper clips. I do not recommend that you use a paper clip every single time this happens, but uh, I just have paper clips right here. Probably just have a a reusable thing that you can do with this, or uh, even even like toothpicks will work, and they're cheaper than paper clips. I'm pretty sure. So. Okay, there we go. All right, so we will take our. Talus are blue, and we don't need very much. I think that little drop will pretty much do it. Okay. And then we're just gonna, you know, get the brush wet. And then... Okay, there we go. A little bit of Talus are blue. And we're just gonna go back over the lines that we, that we did here. So the, the highlights will actually remain but that white will not be so sharp uh, against the blue. Should look somewhat better, I think. I don't know, this, this might not actually help, but I think it will. I think it'll help a little bit. I think that looks better. Yeah, uh, okay. I think it looks better. I guess it's a subjective opinion, but, uh, well, hmm, that's a weird thing. I guess all opinions are subjective, but, <laughs> but okay. Um, yeah, I, I think that this works. I think this looks better. Uh, I'm not gonna do that for for each mech. I'm just gonna do it for this. I think I think the the dry brushing was a little too heavy on these barrels. But otherwise, you know, I think it looks pretty decent. And then once we fix this here. We can move on to putting the brown earth on the base, or on the bases, on all the all their bases. There we go. There. Oh yeah, much better, much better. Okay, much better. Hmm. I don't hate that, actually. Huh. I wonder, would the rest of them look better if I did that? Interesting. I don't know. Let's see. No, I think I'm gonna be lazy and leave it. Yeah. Okay, yeah, so we're gonna move on to uh, to doing the bases. So basically, the last step we're gonna be able to do tonight is applying brown earth to their bases, and then that has to dry for, for at least a couple of hours, but I'll, I'll let it dry overnight just for good measure. So the bases won't get finished, you know, on, on the stream, but you know, next week when we do painting on the dark side again, I'll, I'll show you guys the results. And I already went over the process. It's going to be exactly the same as the process that I used for for the regular Davian Max. It's going to so it's going to be. Uh, let me hang my brush up and I'll, and I'll oh, let me put the thing back on the brush here and then I'll, and I'll tell you guys. Okay. So the process is it's going to be applying the brown earth to the bases 
you know, with this thing and uh, with a nice dead brush with, with both of those tools, okay? Then once that's dry, we take, uh, we take Agrax Earthshade and we just slather that on quite liberally on top of the brown earth and we let that dry. And then once that's dry, we dry brush that with Vallejo Bone White and then uh, we go around the rim of each base and we just paint the rim of the base black with GW Abaddon Black. And we specifically want GW Black because it's really opaque. Uh, I have like Vallejo Black. Vallejo Black is not good. Vallejo Black is uh, a bit transparent and it takes a lot of coats to cover. But GW, Citadel Black, Abaddon Black, this will cover in one to two coats, depending on what you're doing. So that is the thing you want. Okay, so uh, I'm just gonna move this palette. That over there and bump the camera. Sweet. Oh, it's all dusty now. Okay. All right, and then we're gonna do this. Okay. It's not a whole lot left in this pot, but I have another pot of this. So. Let's use it. All right, so we're gonna use this uh, this thingy. This I think this is an army painter sculpting tool, but whatever it is, uh, this is what we're gonna use. So we're gonna we're gonna take this, and we're gonna get some uh, some brown earth on it. And we're just gonna... Oh, not that much. Oh, it's way too much. Oh, shit. Oh, I really fucked that one up. Ooh, okay. Crap. <laughs> and just immediately I messed it up. Wow, very nice. Good job, me. Okay. Uh, that's okay. It takes a long time to dry, so we have a lot... We have a, we have a pretty long time to fix this. Okay, and, and I'll show you how we're gonna fix it, obviously, because now I have to. Uh, anyways, so we're just gonna we're gonna use this to spread this around on the on the big open areas here And uh, we're gonna get it to the back and stuff and I'm gonna try and not get that on my fingers So I don't want to get it in you know too many different places on the mech It's fine if we get this on its feet and legs and stuff because I mean it's okay. It's walking through through some kind of you know dirt terrain and stuff, so clearly it's going to get it on its feet. So it doesn't matter if we get it on its feet or on its legs, but we don't want to get it on, like, its torso or its or its face or whatever, you know, the arms or anything. Okay. So, all right. Uh, usually I wait until the end to do this, but let's, let's just take the big flat part and kind of scrape this here. I'm going to do the same thing here, just... Scrape this off and try not to spread it around too much. Ah, it's probably going to dry there, but that's okay. It's it's on the bottom. Who cares? Uh, let's see. Can we can we wipe that off on the on the paper towel a little bit? Maybe a, eh, a little bit, a little bit. Okay. And then we take this and uh, just kind of wipe the excess off. In the paper towel okay and then we use our dead brush just get a little a little tiny bit more here and then we just we use the dead brush to push it up against the, the models feet and stuff because if you do this with the sculpting tool you're gonna get it much higher than than you would with the brush but at the same time, you want to do this with a brush you don't care about, which is why I'm using a dead one. Uh, because this is basically a uh, kind of glue. It's like a it's like a glue with you know with with a color pigment and and some texture stuff in it. So if you get it in your brush, uh, I mean you can clean it out, but it's going to ruin your brush. So be sure when you're doing this. Uh, use a brush you don't care about. <laughs> so this, this is a brush that's been, you know, it's been dead for a while. So that's why I'm, that's why I'm okay doing it with this brush. 
And then once I've got it everywhere, uh, I will go around the rim of the base with the big flat part of the sculpting tool and kind of, you know, scrape it off of places that I don't want. And see how we got it kind of down the front there? Once this is done, uh, I probably won't notice that because, I mean, we're going to go around and paint the rim of the base black. So there might be a little, you know, sandy dirt texture there or something, but it'll it'll be black, so it won't be too big of a deal, you know. Yeah. So I mean, we're even getting a little bit on the side here, and that's okay. It's not it's not a big deal. We just we'll paint it black, and it'll be fine. And see, we're getting it on the bottom of his foot. That's okay too. I mean, he walked through the sand. It's fine. You don't walk through the sand and not get dirty, right? Okay. But at the same time, I mean, this foot comes out past the edge of the base, so we're not going to go out of our way to apply it to places where it doesn't really matter. You know, places where we're not actually going to see it. Okay, so then we just kind of wipe that off in here. Okay, and the paper towel. You guys can't see that, but there's that. And we can... Swizzle it around in there a little bit. It doesn't really matter if this brush is wet or not. Okay, so now... Alright, so now we take the big flat part and we just go around and kind of scrape off what we can scrape off. Okay, something like that. And we just wipe it off on the paper towel. And we just do that for all the areas where we got you know, a little, a little too much on the edges and everything. Okay. Something like that. Yeah, even, even this part here. And that way we have a nice kind of sharp edge. Ish. And there we go. Okay. So that's that's brown earth applied to one mech, and now we'll just do that on the other three. And then uh, basically that's that's really all we're going to do with these, pretty much. Yeah. Okay, so now we do the Banshee. Okay, here we go. Banshee. Okay, so I did not immediately start out by getting it all down the front of the base and stuff. So that's pretty good. And yeah. Okay. And then we'll, and we'll kind of put it in the back. So, yeah. I I like to try and use a, a a textured thing that's already, you know, pretty much the color I want it to be. Cause I mean, you can wait for this to dry and then just paint it. You know, you can you can take a texture paint and then just paint on top of it, and that's fine. But I mean, that's basically an extra step, and uh, I mean, I'm all about you know eliminating eliminating extraneous steps, basically. So if I if I just start with a with a texture that's the right color, then uh, you know that's we're already a step ahead, basically. Oh, my bitrate just went to zero. Nice. Okay, so we get a little bit more. And now it's gone to like 10,000. That's, that's really weird. Kind of rubber bands like that. Okay, so then... Push it up to the feet. And there's a little like outside edge to this. So we got to get it kind of in here a little bit. And now I'm kind of getting it on on the edge of the base, but that's okay. That's okay. That doesn't really matter. And you know, there's a there's a lot more detail stuff that we can do to these mechs and everything, but I just want to play the game really, and I don't want to play with you know just gray resin. So just quick, quick paint jobs is what we're looking for. Just real quick, you know. Okay looking quick paint jobs. Nothing fantastic, just they're just fine. They're passable. Yeah. Okay. And then same thing back here. That's 
music is so good. I'm just kind of blown away by it. Okay, almost done with this base. Done with this base. There we go. Okay, yep. So that one, and then we'll just take the big flat part of the sculpting tool, and we will run it around the, uh, the outside of that base. Just scrape off whatever excess we can, we can scrape off. This. Let's see. Doesn't look like there's too much in the front, but let's see. There. Much there. Okay. Well, this one seems pretty clean. Okay. Like that. Okay. All right. So there's our banshee. Oh, did I get that back a little bit too far there? I think. Yeah, I think I created a little weird area right there. Something like that. That's fine, okay. All right, so there's the Banshee. Okay. Yes. All right, so now we just do the Roughneck and not the Bushwhacker, the Blackjack. The, the, the Roughneck and the Blackjack, not the Bushwhacker, okay. My right earbud is falling out. Hang on. Ah, that thing never stays in my ear. Okay. Let's see. And then from the back. Actually, let's be different and start with the back this time. Oh, Look, because this one's kind of raised up a little bit. Push it in there. And normally, you don't want to push with your brush. Because that will cause the bristles to splay out. Like so. But again, this is a dead brush. And this is why we use brushes we don't care about to do this. So I just take this and push it up under there. Put some right in there. And it doesn't matter if we get it all over his feet. You know, he's, he's walking through the dirt. It's fine. Okay. Like 
there. There's a little spot right here. Okay, I think that's good. All right. Okay, and then we just, let's see. Scrape a little bit. Okay. Road trips to me are freedom, and the stroke yeah, stopped that. I would not be. Oh, that's pretty good. Go yeah. ER. Every time I get behind the wheel okay. of my vehicle, I'm thankful. One more. I, can. I have a lot more life to live. Okay, last one. Last Mac. All right. Okay. Last Mac. It's the blackjack now. Go. You know, I really hope my audio is not like crackling and popping tonight. I'm pretty sure I fixed that issue. But, uh,. Hopefully somebody would tell me if I didn't. Hmm. But you know, I hope it's not. I hope it's not doing that. Okay, here we go. Something like that. Okay. All right. Okay, and now and just push it up against the feet and everything and get a little bit more. Do this whole routine one more time. Little lippy area right there. Okay. okay, and then the other foot, and then we're done. Yeah. Just go around and do the scrapey thing. Okay, I'm not gonna bother cleaning that brush out. Let's see. A little bit there. That's pretty much fine. That's, yeah, that's it. I think that's it. There we go. Okay, so then then it's just the process that I, that I outlined a minute ago. It's just Agrax Earthshade, 
uh, bone white and painting the painting the rims of the bases black and that's it and then these are done oh and then and then varnishing them of course but yeah that's pretty much it okay so I'll just wipe my tool off here okay there we go and I'm gonna throw this paper towel away that's it cool okay Wow, that was almost three hours. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and end the stream there since these are these are basically done, and then uh, next week I'll I'll show you guys the completed bases, and uh, that's it. That is it. So awesome. Yes, this is this was kind of a fun stream. Okay, so that's it. Uh, I'm gonna end the stream here. Thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to do all the YouTube things. Remember to comment and subscribe and do a third thing. And uh, I'm going to press the right button. And uh, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll see you.